Hi, this is Laura with Papori of Life, and as I promised yesterday, I wanted to do a video on how to help you think about how to build a pantry for what might be coming around the bend. But not only that, even if that does not happen, you want to be able to be prepared for storms, unexpected outages, whatever the case may be. And when you do this, um, some people don't have a lot of money, so you want to do it a little at a time. You know, if you have an extra five bucks, use that five bucks for something that might be on this list that I'm going to share with you. So, what I would recommend, and I'm going to, I started this yesterday, so I want to make sure that I can get through it without my neighbor starting to mow his lawn. So, you want things like dry milk, or evaporated milk, or shelf-stable milk. It's more expensive to buy shelf-stable than it is to buy a gallon of milk you can learn how to preserve milk um, and I, I do that but this isn't the video to share how I do that but still that's out there you have um, evaporated milk and dry milk dry milk is the most economical that you can do and you know what when you need milk it doesn't taste so bad you just want to make sure it's cold so have a means to be able to keep your milk cold have dried eggs and other egg alternates Eggs will be important for baking, for cooking, like for um, breakfast. Now, dried eggs are great um, for scrambled eggs, but they will not be if you want a hard-boiled egg. It's not going to happen. You could also hard-boil some eggs now and have them ready, but those are like a short, short-term shelf stable or refrigerator stable type of product. And um, but other alternates are like flaxseed and applesauce that you can use in your baking. You want it. flour. I have um, different flours because I'm gluten intolerant. My husband is not. So like if he was beginning to build his pantry, he would have just regular flour because that's all he would use. Um, does he bake much? No. <laughs> but he would. He knows how to because he, he watches me all the time. But he makes cookies. He makes um, banana cake or he'll make muffins. He knows how to, but he would want only the regular flour. So get the flours that you use. If you want other options, start now in how to use them and get them in small quantities right now. And you can get those at farm stands and stuff like that. They, they sell them in small quantities. The grocery stores do as well, which the grocery stores might be a little bit more affordable. You want to have sugars on hand. Um, you know, look at how often you go through sugar. Do you have a five pound bag that lasts you all year? Then maybe having an extra bag of sugar might be just enough to get you through whatever situation if it's getting down. That's a personal choice. Have honey on hand. Not only does it sweeten your tea or put on toes, it's very medicinal. It's really good to have a teaspoon of tea, um, honey every day but it's also medicinal and one thing that you can do with honey is infuse garlic in your honey and after a week or two you just take out a uh, clove garlic that's been infused it's amazing just just try it and if you don't like that you can actually take that infused um, garlic that's been infused in the honey put it in a little saucepan heat it up and it softens it up and it does it's, it doesn't give you a garlicky aftertaste at all. It's really delightful. And that's going to help you on a lot of um, colds and viruses and stuff. Let's see. Maple syrup. Now we got the dried eggs. We got the flour. You might want to make pancakes or something. Maple syrup. You're going to need something like that. Try to get your local grown or your local harvested maple syrup. That is better for you. It doesn't have additives in it. And when we are at the point that we are not finding foods, you want to have food that is going to enhance your body. So having additives in there from store-bought maple syrups and stuff is really not beneficial. Um, but it's your choice. I, I have some kids that they don't care. They just go to the grocery store and get their maple syrup. Because you know what? When you have kids or when your budget is tight, that's what they have. So you you do what you feel is appropriate for you and your family. Seasonings. If you can't get to the store but you have a pack of rice, you're going to want some seasonings after a while, like a week. If that's all you have in the house, 
you may want to, what can I do with this, okay? So have that. Make sure you have butter too. Um, and watch some of my videos that'll be coming out on how to make shelf-stable butter and shelf-stable ghee. And if you don't want to go through that effort, that's totally understandable. Try to get some shelf-stable um, milk um, butters of that you will use. So seasoning, salt, pepper. Make sure you have salt. And even though I don't eat a lot of salt, I don't salt a lot of my meals. I do use salt in preserving. I use salt um, in different things, and definitely salt on corn on the cob. But have a nice brand of salt. You know, and it's better if you have to um, grind it. Those are really good salt. Sea salt is the best. That's the kind that I generally use in everything. So your salt and peppers. R I mentioned rice, but you want to have your rice and your grains and stuff like that. If you're storing rice, and brown rice is good, um, I don't particularly like it, but it is a healthy, healthy rice, but it's not. it does not have the same shelf-stable um, time frame. So white rice is better. And there are some concerns with rice, um, which I will go over in another video and show you how to cook it so it's not so concerning. Yeast, you want to make sure you have yeast on hand for baking bread or other things. If you're not, if you don't even use yeast and have never used it, there's no sense in you getting it unless you are going to start learning how to make yeast. I would start out with, a, if you're new at it, get a few packets, learn how to make bread. If you don't have that time and you're not interested, you know what, farm stands will be selling homemade breads. It'll be at a premium, but you'll be able to get bread probably. Let's see. Dried fruit, like raisins, cranberries, strawberries, blueberries, whatever it is, those are something to have on hand for a nice sweet treat. And that that is far better for you than the candies and stuff that your kids might want. And plus, you can put them in baking, you can ferment with them, you can do a variety of things with your dried fruit. And even though a lot of people are doing the big um, freeze dryers, they're expensive. Um, and I've looked into it and I, I'm just not ready for it. And as much as I'd like one, it's not something that I can do right now. And that's the other thing is make sure what you're doing works within your budget. And if you can't afford something, say you don't have a dehydrator and you have somebody who's asking you, what can I get for your birthday? Maybe they'll get you a dehydrator. And um, so that's an option. But um, one thing that I did do in my dehydrator, I wasn't sure how it would work, but I had frozen berries in the freezer because I'm trying to clean out my freezer in there. And I put the blueberries in my dehydrator and they dried up beautifully. And plus it's shelf stable in terms of they're dried. You can um, grind them up to make blueberry powder that you can put flavor into different things that you might bake. So that's a good thing to do. Um, so past the dried fruit, we're going into oatmeal. You're going to want some cereals and sure you can buy some of your favorite cereals. I can show you how to preserve those um, so they last longer than how they are in your box because those plastic bags They're only good for so long eventually that cereal inside that will go bad. It'll get kind of So I, I do something else to preserve those and crackers and stuff so um, So but with your oatmeal you can make cookies you can make granola you can make oatmeal um, so oatmeal is good, it has a lot of fiber, and it is something that's very healthy, and so if your body can tolerate oatmeal, this is good for you. And for those of you, you can use that instead of breadcrumbs for your oatmeal. Some people use grape nuts. I, use, I actually use oatmeal, and um, ever since I started doing that years ago, the kids like the oatmeal far, I mean, excuse me, they like the meatloaf far better. Other grains such as couscous and stuff like that, if you enjoy cooking with those, you want to have some. And there's different um, and there's different ones out that you can pick up. Let's see. Canned fruit and vegetables. If you don't preserve your own fruit and vegetables, whether you grow a garden or whether you go to the farmer's market, you're going to want to make sure you have extra cans of fruit and vegetables. Buy one or two a week. 
to add if it's on sale and watch those sales flyers because if they say that coffee's on sale that's the time to go get your coffee that you enjoy um, we have a certain brand of coffee that we like but it's going up in price even on their sale it's gone up two dollars for their um, sale price and it's kind of like wow so what we've done is we've picked up some other basic I don't know if it was Maxwell House or something like that so that we have an alternate if we can't get the coffee we enjoy but the same thing happens with your fruit and vegetables watch those sales so that you can get it now if you don't like green beans don't buy green beans if you but if you like peas buy the peas so for me I buy you know when I was buying canned goods and I still actually buy canned goods just to have a backup um, like I have not canned peas and I'm not canned green beans but this year my green beans seem to be coming along yay and I'm hoping my peas do too but you have to have a real long field for peas so I think this year's peas will just be basically in my salads and um, meals like that so but you can get your um, peas and get them another thing for peas corn and um, mixed vegetables for those who enjoy the mixed vegetables buy them in from the freezer if you have a dehydrator I just dehydrated the peas and corn that were in my freezer taking up space and I got them down into two small quart jars so I guess maybe I don't carry a lot but you take those dried vegetables and you can put them into soups and if you're going camping it's an easy thing to grab and go um, I mentioned coffee um, have some instant because if your coffee makers not working you may want to have instant on hand oils like your coconut oil your olive oil whatever you use for cooking you'll want to have a, you know an extra bottle or two on hand for that um, I do a lot of stir fries so I try to have coconut and I try to have I use ghee and I'll get into that in a minute I use um, I use real butter on some things like asparagus it's you, you got to have real butter for that and even though I'm milk intolerant um, real butter doesn't bother me so I'm but I don't have it every day either let's see so all your oils your butters now if you are not one to um, you got butter in the refrigerator but you don't you're worried about it you get a great deal on it you can actually convert that butter to shelf stable or you can convert it to ghee but if you're not into that make sure you get those shelf stable items for cooking and stuff and for flavoring crackers you know my husband has a few favorite crackers that he likes and I haven't yet started making crackers it's on my to-do list I just haven't done it yet so what I do is I get those and I put them in jars and I seal them and I'm gonna do a video on how to seal your crackers and stuff so they last longer you can open it up and you seal it again so you might if you don't have canned jars try to get a few quart jars on hand so you can do something like that if you want cheese on hand and the refrigerators down the best kind of cheese to have for shelf stable is to have the wax wrapped cheese and um, so then when you're ready for it you can have it. so if you have an opportunity to get that talk to the farmer who does that he'll explain how that works one thing that you're going you should have on hand I mean we got the flour we got the sugar and all that make sure you have baking soda and baking powder all those extra things now you might not need a lot of those stuff cream of tartar um, stuff like that um, but baking soda I use to brush my teeth I use that with the coconut oil and I make up things and I have some other things I put into my toothpaste but baking soda is if you don't have toothpaste that's an option baking soda and now get some vinegar vinegar and baking soda together just a little bit together put it in a little cup put your toothbrushes in it it'll clean your toothbrushes we do that weekly but if we forget it's something I do the next week and if you leave your brushes do this as an experiment or it, maybe you already have a science project happening in your bathroom look at the back of your brush and you'll see um, a lot of germs really it is so we do it once a week we just feel better should I do it every day probably but I have a tendency to be brushing my teeth throughout the day so I'd be washing it every few hours or at least two times a day 
Um, I also use vinegar to wash my floors. I use vinegar and I, I actually make my vinegar for my hair rinse and fabric softener, but you can use vinegar in your fabric softener. You can use it as a hair rinse and you can also use it to wash your floors. And I use vinegar I in this season when there's ants that like the maple syrup I use and the honey on the, they know where I am. So we use vinegar with peppermint in it during the spring summer when ants are interested in what we might have and we keep everything sealed but they smell that stuff um, so it, that's something to do in the winter fall and winter I put lavender in my vinegar and I use that for floor wash now the vinegars I make I can certainly do that the vinegar I'm making right now has rose and lavender and that I'm using it for um, fabric softener as well as hair rinse so that's a good thing bar soap please <laughs> make sure you have soap on hand because if the water is not running when it is running or you have the opportunity for a shower you really need soap on hand um, but I hope that you're preserved you're getting water too but with the soap um, natural soap like we make our soap so I can use that in my hair because I don't have all those phylates and all those other things that get into our soap that personally I feel is bad for our skin. Um, you may be comfortable with it. So at least have the soap on hand for when you're, you know, for at your kitchen sink as well as when you're showering just to keep bathing. And if, if you don't have enough water for showering and bathing, you, you know, the bottled water that you purchase, you can warm it up in the tea kettle so that you can do a sponge bath. So you might want to make sure you have soap and plenty of water. When you go to the store, you know, they have 10 cases of watered bottle, bottled water. Don't allow everybody else to do this because when we have a run on a product, that will make the increase and in, that will make the pricing increase go even faster. So just try to go and if it's something that you really want to get going and you have the resources to spend five bucks a week, go another day to get another two cases you know whatever works for you I do know that um, I do get roadside curb or curbside pickup at Walmart and that's how I get my water I just get two cases of that and um, a few other items because I don't really like going into the store um, so uh, those are a few things and in addition to that you want to learn how to take your food products most especially your um, produce and stuff that is not shelf stable and how to preserve it. You may need to learn, if you want, learn to make kimchi. If you don't want to make it, Farmer Stands will sell it to you. That's how I found out I liked it. I bought one to see if I liked it and now I make my own. Right now I'm making some sauerkraut. Um, but there's all kinds of things that you can. And I've got, I've um, fermented some carrots. I've fermented some garlic and I think I fermented onions or that's on my to-do list but you can ferment your vegetables and so when you need some vegetables and you just want to snack on without worrying that they're going bad that's something you can learn to do learn what you can substitute for products like I mentioned eggs you can use flaxseed and applesauce um, now is a real good time to learn off-grid skills. If you are someone who loves to go camping, you have an, an outdoor camper, you have, I hope. But maybe you have a fire pit in your yard. Get a grate so you can cook on that. Now, cooking on it, yeah, you're going to be making soups and stews and stuff like that. But it's an option to... Um, and I just mentioned stews. You may want to get canned stews and stuff or canned prepared food, canned meat, whatever it is. If you don't know how to put those up in preserving, then you might want to purchase those just one at a time as your budget allows you. Um, I, I just have a thing about, I don't like to see food getting thrown away and when something goes bad that gets fallen behind, it kind of disappoints me. I mean, we have a compost, but I don't want to feed the compost. And that's what I was finding with um, with a lot of the fruits and vegetables, and more so now. I get them in, and they're going bad. 
before I have a chance to use them. So I try to, when they come in, I try to get them ready so I know how I'll use them and use them right up. And, um, and the other thing is, if you can have a garden, that's going to be great. I know that many people have apartments and they might not even have a balcony. But if you do, you can have a small garden. Get to know your neighbors. Try to find out who your tribe is and who wants to work with you to um, provide meals for everybody. Because maybe you could grow tomatoes and peppers. Somebody else is good at make, growing onions. Somebody else is good at growing potatoes because your balconies will not grow enough. But maybe together you can all, you know, share with one another, barter. Like, hey, I have extra tomatoes. Do you have extra potatoes? Maybe you can barter a little bit. And that's what we're going to be getting to. We need to understand that we're going to have to barter or we're going to have to give something of ourselves in order to help one another. If you have no skills to bring to the table and you're not willing to work, it's going to be really hard for people to want to help you. It's not that they don't want to. It's just that we're going to be a community of people that are trying to survive something that's not we're not prepared for. Now, a regular winter storm, a regular electrical outlet that you might be out of electricity, a bad storm comes in. Here in New Hampshire, where I'm located, our electricity rarely goes out. Will it go out? You know, we don't have solar. And so we, we're going to depend on that, um, if he can get it fixed, our generator. He's trying to fix it so that it works. Um, so look outside the box. If you have questions, you know, put them into the comment section, and I will try to get back to you. I'll try to answer there, but maybe it's something that will trigger me to provide you with another video. Um, and as I, I, this is something I always forget because I'm new to YouTube, and I really, truly hope this takes off. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. At least like the videos that you are enjoying. You don't have to like everything. You might not even have time to watch them all. I have favorite YouTubers out there. I can't watch all of their videos, but the ones I like, I do put a like on. Sometimes I'll put comments because of how much they taught me. But also, if I share them, that helps with their whole YouTube channel and it gets other people to come in. And that's what builds their um, YouTube channel. I think right now I have five. That's how new I am. So my goal is to get a thousand and, um, and it can be done. It can be done on my own, but it'll go a lot faster if you help me by subscribing yourself, liking the videos and sharing, but only if you desire. And, um, and any video that's important to you that might be helpful to somebody else, that's a great way too. So I'm going to end this here. It's less than 30 minutes. I'm getting better. So I just want, hope that this basic list is helpful to you. Um, I could go on and on, but I don't want to go to the point where I overwhelm you. I think that basic list is sufficient. I also think that you might not use everything that we might consider to be important. You might have other things and you can put that on the list because somebody else who's watching this might say, oh yeah, I didn't think of that, including myself. So I hope you have a great day and may God bless you.